Basket in Plymouth, Wisconsin. You know me, Elaine. Um, partner Cheryl's downstairs helping the rest of you who are here needing help. And we have a visitor today, Dr. Dan Francis from Francis Chiropractic. Um, Dr. Dan, we laugh and say he's the official chiropractor of the sewing basket. We have a lot of customers that use his service and his wife is his partner as well. Um, wonderful place. Um, reason we go there is we have a lot of issues with neck, shoulder. Um, when you're at the sewing machine for long lengths of time, also that rotary cutting motion, all of those things can really wear your body out um, when you do it without stretching and some different motion. A lot of what makes a difference is how your machine is set up and what you're doing. Uh, most people have their machines in, if you've got a dedicated sewing room, have your machine set into a table where the machine actually sets into the surface of the machine. The reason that those are so nice is when you're sewing, if you're free motion quilting or piecing, if you look, my arm is straight down and my arm comes straight across here. I'm kind of back from where I would be normally, but I'm moving this motion, which is a natural motion. If I'm up higher, I end up with my hands up here and you see what my shoulders do when I do that? If I'm trying to free motion quilt, that's not working very well because I'm up here and my shoulders are doing this. And I have this kink right here, Dr. Dan. It's always there. <laughs> it's always there. <laughs> find a blind spot. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so height of table is one thing. If you don't have a table with a built-in, um, a lowered unit for your machine, um, you can purchase those here at the sewing basket. We have those. We also have the hydraulic chairs, which I happen to be sitting on. They're real cute. They come in different um, fabrics, a few different styles that we have here at the shop. Nice to have that hydraulic so you can raise and lower the chair um, as another option. But as I was talking about that with Dr. Dan one day, we talked about the fact that we should get together and have a live where he kind of talks to us about What's happening with our bodies when we're sewing? He kind of laughed at me when I said, it's not uncommon for us to be at the sewing machine for, oh, a full hour or two or three or eight, <laughs> nine or 10 all day. I had a lady the other day that came in and said she made 65 masks in one day and she was there, oh um, sewed all day, like nine and a half hours. So it happens. We don't always remember to get up and stretch, which is a big thing. But Dr. Dan's going to kind of talk to us from here. Well, you know, what, what's happened in COVID is that there's so many people uh, making masks and quilts. And I, I know it, it's been crazy for the whole sewing quilting industry. Um, but it's also been real common with just the home workstations, right? Everyone, this is uh, important for sewing, but now we have people at their home and at their home, they have desk heights and computers that aren't really set right for them. And even so, the kids. Yeah, and well, then, then you That's look at the school and the, yeah, it's just a mess. So this translates to any static posture. Our bodies are not meant to be static. Our muscles are meant to move. So these static postures are just tough for you. And we're gonna we're gonna go through, I brought my, my spine here. We're gonna talk through some of the posture. Elaine's gonna be my model. Um, I'm sure he's gonna rub my neck. <laughs> free treatment. Um, <laughs> But it's really, really important to number one, if you're doing this like, hey, if this for five minutes, no big deal, right? And my computers and my uh, and my treatment rooms aren't set right because I'm on there for a second, then I'm off. But when you're set there for a while, you better set it up right. When you're at your computer or at your uh, sewing machine for a long period of time, if you want to have fun at it, you don't want to create pain during it. So. Uh, with that realization, you want to set up the the setup is as important as the machine. And, um, you know, I can have a, I like to bike, I can have a wonderful bike, but if I'm not set right on, on it, it's not going to operate and I'm not going to be as powerful on it. So you won't be able to last as long or you won't be able to keep your concentration if you're hurting. So let's work on posture. Um, to give you an example real quick, Here's the spine. This, should I move this out of the way? No, you're perfect. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because we're going to go to there in a second. But your spine from the front should be straight. Okay. And uh, when you don't have that, that's called the scoliosis, real common. Uh, that's uh, something that runs in my family a little bit. Um, very treatable. But so from the side, you've got 
these curves that are in there. And that curve is real important. And those, those the curve in the neck and then the mid back and the low back, that's sort of your shock absorption. Okay. Well, what's missing on this fella is his head. And if you if you want to show that typical posture for sewing, you I'm know, in the wrong spot. Yeah. 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 So look at that. Look at look at Elaine's head here. She's flexed out. Okay. So if I look at that from a uh, the spine position, her head is the weight of a bowling ball. It's ten pounds. Okay. So I that's brought a for you. Girl's bowling that's ball, right. Not a boy and man's bowling ball. No way. So that's a, this is a ten pound weight. If I hold that here, I can hold it there for a long period of time. If I hold it here. That's a lot harder. It's heavy already, not all day. And you're taking that amount of weight and you're flexing it forward. Well, anyone who has held their head there for a long time <clears throat> realizes that these muscles back here that start in the neck, they actually anchor all the way down into the mid back. So when people come up to me with upper and mid back problems, I know it's a head posture issue. I know that they're flexing their head forward. All of these muscles anchor right here. And then they anchor, here's the shoulder blade. We're piece by piece putting this guy together. Um, the shoulder blade's right here, okay? Now, this is rolling around because you're using the arm forward. So this shoulder blade rolls around, which means this muscle's getting pulled from the top and it's getting pulled from the bottom. and well, that's obnoxious. It's going to hurt like heck. Okay. I would probably explain the um, under my shoulder blade yeah. pain. Yeah. Kind of mid back, but under your shoulder blade. Exactly. So those, so those muscles, and it's hard because this muscle right back here is called the rhomboid, and then there's the trapezius. Everyone heard of the trap, and then one that's really sensitive is called the levator scapula. It elevates the scapula or the shoulder blade. Okay, it elevates this up. Well, if this is rotating around because she's flexed forward, there's a muscle that attaches from here right into her neck. And that muscle is really highly innervated. And it, it's, it's one that when it hurts, you're not going to rotate your neck very well. It, it hurts like a son of a gun. And the one under the shoulder blade, those muscles can get trigger points. Trigger points are like a, they're, they're what a knot is but they can refer pain. So uh, not only can you have pain where the knot is, but it'll refer pain down the arm. It'll act like almost like a pinched nerve. Um, so the muscles contract and relax, okay? That's, that's their job. And when they have to, your body posturally, spinally, is supposed to, the spine is supposed to bear the weight, okay? When you go forward and the muscle has to do it, well, that muscle is now lengthened and tight. So a lot of people come in, they've been on the computer at their office, or they've been sewing, and they say, oh, my neck is so tight, so I want to stretch it out. That's absolutely the wrong thing to do because go forward for me. She's, she's forward, but she's forward and long here. It's just like my arm was. That muscle's gotten longer. It's tight, but it's not tight and short. It's tight and long. The, to shut that off, what does she have to do? She has to bring her head back. Now these muscles shut off. Oh, that's good. Keep doing that. Yeah, see? <laughs> right as we go. Yeah. See as we roll. Um, but that totally shuts the muscle off. Okay, so the, the part that's tight on most of us is the front part. Okay, the anterior part of the muscle. So if you're tight in the neck, what you need to actually do is ex expand back. Okay, because that's what shuts these muscles off. And the muscles have some nerves that go through them. So if you're someone, everyone presents different, right? So you might be here, your shoulders get into your ear, and that might give you just a sore muscle, the pain behind the shoulder blade. The next person might get a headache, okay? They might have this just dull headache or a sharp headache, turn into a migraine. Well, the muscles right under the occiput, which is the skull, they hold, they, they do micromanaging the skull movement. Well, there's little nerves that come out of there and up into the skull, and those those go uh, to the head and they give you sensation. And if they get pinched, you're going to get a headache. Okay. So that's real, real common that in a lot of people will come and say, Oh, I have a sinus headache. Well, you, you have any phlegm or mucus coming out? No, that's from here. You're that headache the refers up. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. It's, a, it, it's just radiating. Okay. So this is really, just really, really a common thing. And now, 
Here's the other thing. If if I were to guess your age range of your client, it tends to go probably on the upper of the end range. Our young customers are about 40 to 60. Okay. Because the ladies get time when they become empty nesters sure. and their money becomes their own again. Yeah. And then 60, 65, when they start to retire, they have more time. Yeah. So our customer, probably 75% of our customers are from 40 to 80. Okay. So what happens posturally as as we age and if our head goes forward, you follow your head. The head's the lead dog. Okay. If your head's forward, your shoulders are going to roll forward. You're not going to stand with your head forward and your shoulders back. Okay. If your head goes forward, your shoulders are going to follow. If your head's back, your shoulders are going to eventually follow. Okay. Now the problem with the shoulder, now we talk rotator cuff. Most of the shoulder muscles actually attach to the shoulder from the shoulder and attach it to the spine. So the spine, can you turn around for a second? Yep. The spine actually attaches to your, or, uh, the shoulder actually attaches to your body from the base of the skull all the way down to the butt crack. Okay. It's literally it engulfs the whole back. Okay, those spine, those shoulder muscles. Now, the you we've all heard of the rotator cuff. You know, the million dollar, well, twenty million dollar picture now. Okay, throws the shoulder out. Well, the rotator cuff are four muscles: one here, two here, and one underneath that form a common tendon that hit the shoulder. So the rotator cuff muscles attach in the shoulder on both ends. The rest of the shoulder muscles actually attach from the shoulder to the spine. They're anchoring, their movement of the shoulder. The rotator cuff muscles do just what they say. They rotate us. They rotate the shoulder. That's all they do, plus one thing. They're responsible for holding the shoulder in the capsule. So the pitcher doesn't ruin his rotator cuff actually by rotating. He he ruins his shoulder, he ruins his rotator cuff. By when he throws, when he releases the ball, the rotator cuff muscles have to keep it in joint. They have to decelerate real fast. So the reason I talk to you about this is because that happens quick to him, but to the person sewing, it happens slow and steady. Okay, because what happens is as your posture rolls forward, typically in normal posture, this joint capsule holds the shoulder in place. But if you if you have bad posture over a sewing, this shoulder rolls forward. Now you're holding that capsule, you're holding the shoulder in place with the shoulder rotator cuff muscles. And as you do that, not over days, but over weeks, over months, over years, now over decades, now you've got a problem. So the pitcher is a hundred dollar bill. You guys are a hundred dollar a month. Okay, and that builds and builds and builds. Then all of a sudden, we get these elderly people who've got rotator cuffs that are shot, and that causes a lot of pain. And if you start getting really bad, you can get a frozen shoulder. A frozen shoulder, what happens there is, oh, it hurts to go here, so I stop going there. So I only go to here, and then all of a sudden, that hurts, so I stop going, and now it doesn't move at all. And that can be a surgical problem or manipulation under anesthetic, it becomes yes. a real it just comes nasty and it's not quick, not quick to get rid of. Um, no pill fixes it, you know, so it's, it's, uh, this is a big thing. So we really want to keep you flexible and healthy and spine properly aligned well, and even aware. Just putting my head back forces my shoulders. I mean, you, it forces is the wrong word. It naturally moves my shoulders. It back, draws it. And right? my shoulder, that's always my nasty problem feels better. What, Rather than doing this, you always try to stretch it. Yeah. Moving my head back, it's like, oh, that feels better than what I'm trying to manipulate myself with my shoulders. You're exactly right. And the thing is, is that, so I tell people, we don't stretch, we flex flexibility. Okay. You need to be pliable. Okay. That flexibility implies movement and strength. Okay. okay. Where like, I don't have people static stretch that much. I want them mobile. Just what you do, that rolling of the shoulder sort of opens you up, right? And, and elongating it backwards posturally, all of that is good. And we'll talk about some things you can do to treat it. But it's so important to have that base understanding of 
<clears throat> your alignment and where you need to place things. Because if you're standing inefficiently, um, it's it's horrible. And I, I like the bicycle. Okay, I've been, I've biked. He's probably, a crazy man on a bicycle. <laughs> but I've probably biked 100,000 miles in my lifetime. And once in a while, I'll be biking with the sun behind me. And I'll look at my shadow and my shoulders are in my ears. And I'm like, you know, it's not like the bike handle is going to run away from me. You know, you can rest, you can relax. And so we all need to take a chill pill and sort of relax those shoulders and breathe. And um, it, it's just real important. So posturally doing the right setup with the right equipment is really, really important. And the right equipment, meaning no matter what sewing machine you have, the right setup from the chair to the, uh, to the table so that you can posturally align yourself. And this is the same thing for um, people at desks. You know, from a computer standpoint, we like the computer screen at arm's distance about two inches, the, the middle of the screen about two inches above eye level. And uh, and that keeps you at, a, at, a, at your natural gaze. Um, but the other thing is you not need to take a break. You know, you, you've got to set an alarm now because – it's one of those things where you get focused, like you know. Oh, you're we, having a blast working on yeah. a fun project. Well, you're, there you are. What a beautiful thing you have here, right? You have the ability for people to be creative and have fun by themselves, and and make wonderful gifts that impact other people. So it's, it's a phenomenal hobby, and uh, you do you get zoned in, and that's awesome. But you want to have that little ringer or the phone so that you can set it off and and allow yourself to stand up, change your posture. I'll show you a couple of the exercises in a minute. But what happens is if you don't start doing this, if you sort of get stuck in this posture, your body starts to adapt to that. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you a little, uh, a little bit about the, the vertebra. So this is a lumbar vertebra. It's a low back vertebra. But this impacts it. I mean, because frankly, like if, you, if we all put this, our hand – on the small of your back, right on the spine, the bone that you can touch. If you stand here, now flex your head down, okay, you feel it move. You feel it move. You yeah. feel it move. It's all connected. This isn't just a – there's some people who come in with this issue. They got a low back problem. That's where it presents. It's their weakest link, okay. But in this example, I'm just showing you this vertebra. But if your neck – is flex forward all this your your low back there's ligaments that attach all this way you're going to feel it here too but either way the spine has this disc that's thick and out of it comes this nerve okay and from that nerve all things are innervated your sensation it innervates your um, organs uh, strength the muscle strength so over time you're disc if you notice the color of this the disc doesn't have any blood flow it can't because it it's a sensitive to pressure so if you had pressure and there would crush the artery so your disc actually gets the blood flow through the bottom of the vertebra it's called embankment it's like a leech field it just leaches into the disc but what's it take to do it you got to move so when you're here statically mm -hmm. your discs aren't getting nutrition Okay, it's a posture you need to move. Okay, they, your body doesn't like movement. Okay, I always like to say the difference between someone alive and dead, we're moving and they're not. Okay, and <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Which I'll add, one of the things we talk about is people tend, ladies in particular, tend to set their ironing board right next to their sewing machine so I don't have to get up and walk oh, over there. Yeah. It's like, nope. That's a great way to move, set your ironing board. You might use your little iron for some of the quick piecing that you're doing, but when you every row that you put together, walk over to your big iron, get up and just move those few feet does make a big difference. That's a huge difference because it that's one of the things that happened in home COVID for office work. You know, Bob isn't now walking down the hallway five to ten minutes to go to a meeting. He's going from one meeting to the next, from seven to eight to nine to ten, and all these hours are just flowing together without his even butt ever leaving the chair. Okay, and that lack of even just a little bit of motion, I mean, it, it'd be good for you to do a couple hours of sewing and then go do a little yard yoga. You know, go 
oh, do whatever, toy. right? No, you don't do oh, yoga. Yeah. <laughs> not yoga, yo, not yo, true yoga. Yo, I thought you meant yard work. No, I was yeah. going to say, no, that's dirty. It's clean and bright by sewing room. There's no mud. <laughs> There's no grass stains. There no grass go. stains. But that movement is important to keep the disc thick and healthy. And if you don't keep the disc thick and healthy, then there's there's less room for the nerve to come out. And then that leads to all kinds of problems function-wise. Um, so you get the vertebra that is aged, and that doesn't look so pretty, right? That If you look at that next to a healthy one, you've got a thin disc, you've got some spurs, which take up space from the nerve, and then you're going to have some buckling of the disc tissue. All of a sudden, there's not so much space in there. God forbid you get any inflammation. Now you've got pressure on that nerve. Now you're coming into me in a lot of pain. And that's just no fun to get rid of. And by the way, which one do you think moves better? Right? I mean, this is going to move a lot better. So that arthritic is that little guy shuffling down the aisle at church, not real mobile. And his organs aren't real pliable either. You know, so this this isn't just about skeleton. It spills over to your organs. So you want to be you want to be doing this a long time. I want you to a, a customer of hers for decades, not for years. You there know? you go. So it's real important to keep those vertebra healthy. And, um, you know, so this is fine. You just have to counteract it. Okay. So um, how we do that, I guess, is the question. Huh? Yeah. So <clears throat> so uh, from posturally, I'm going to come around to you. Okay. So when you're at the machine, you had to, Elaine had talked about it's really important to keep these shoulders down, okay? The shoulders, when they start to raise up, that becomes a problem. When they start to roll forward, that's where you're starting to fire all these muscles, and you're firing them to do nothing. They're holding you in the same place that you would be if you were doing it properly. This is just like free, and you're better to gaze down than to tuck down. This becomes like you can't feel her neck, but I can. And these and muscles it feels are really good. Oh. I'm telling you. A little more rubbing, little, little less more talking. Rubbing, little less talking. <laughs> um, this, when she brings her head back, her muscles shut right off. Okay, so this isn't about being perfect. Okay, if it, it's about doing it a little better. So in posture, if you go from here to here, that's a win. Okay, you're 20% less stress on the neck. That means when you go for a walk and or go out for a few minutes, your body can catch up and, and, and it can uh, bear a lot less weight on it because it, it's all cumulative. Just uh, from a standing posture, if I go from here to here, that's three times the weight on my bottom disc. You know, so when you hold that out, it uh, just improving versus just uh, versus being perfect still makes a huge difference. Okay, so look at these postures as how you can do it better, but not perfect, okay? The other thing is remember to slide your chair forward or back, or even move your machine a little closer to you. That'll totally adjust where your shoulders fit to. Yep, and proper posture long enough is gonna hurt. You know, even proper sitting posture is bad for you because when you're sitting, you're you're also flexing the in the bottom part of the spine. These muscles are flexed forward in, ref, in reference. You know, either way, it's a flex posture. So one of the things you can do if you have those big exercise balls, um, especially the elderly, if you're young enough and feel pliable, um, and these are all I have. All the exercises I'm talking about on my website under patient uh, resources. And Perfect. they're short little YouTube videos that will, like 20 seconds. You can't even fall asleep in them in that time. They're wonderful. Um, and the link to Dr. Dan's website is at the top of this live post. It's right in there, so you can link right to his site from here. So you can take that big exercise ball and you can stick it in a corner of a, like a wall, like this one has a corner over here, and you can just expand over it, okay? That's good for anyone. If you're young enough and feel pliable enough, you can lay over it backwards, okay? But that expansion stretches your groin, stretches your chest, stretches the neck back, and it counteracts what you've done here. So really, every time you, every time you stand up, what you want, want to do is some counterbalancing exercise to open that up. Yep, drawing the shoulder back. If you're going to stretch, it's to hold your head and lightly pull back. So you would come with this hand, 
and go slightly back into the opposite side. So she's elongating this, opening that up. Okay. Yep. That takes you to a more neutral posture, and it's going to offset That feels this. pretty good. Yeah, it's opening up. You don't think of this as tight because this is the painful part. Yeah. But some of the best advice I ever got from an instructor in chiropractic school was if you're only treating the area of pain, you're probably missing the problem. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's right where your fingertips right where my are. Fingers that are shoulder not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that and that's it. You know, she gets that that they call it upper cross syndrome. These muscles cross and it becomes this knot. And I, I'm going to tell you a secret. I, I can walk up to anybody and find the knots are because we're a mechanical system, right? A ma machine with a soul. And you, you, I can tell you where the breaking points are. Okay, the breaking points are very similar on everyone. These knots are, are mapped out and they're very easy to locate. Yeah, so it's real important. Um, the nice thing about that is you can, you can anticipate when they're going, to, they're going to be there from what you're doing. You know, and, and from the longer that, you do it, the yeah. sooner they show up. Yeah, exactly. So, so this is number one, just a light stretch back. You can do. So when I say stretch, I don't want you cranking on it. Okay, you think of your muscles. Your muscles have two characteristics. They have one called elasticity and the other one called plasticity. So, like a rubber band, if you stretch a cold muscle. It's going to want to go back to where it was, right? Okay. But when you've moved a muscle, it's like if I took a, a this is plastic. Um, if I heated this up real hot and then bent it, it's going to stay that way. That's plasticity. That's why moving your muscles creates more flexibility long term. Okay. So if you go for a walk and then you do a little stretching, that muscle's gonna last a little longer. But I don't like long stretches. I want a stretch to be short, okay? And you can, like this is the weight of my arm. It's not me cranking on it, okay? I'm not trying to force it to lengthen. Um, flexibility is like kneading dough. You don't take pizza dough and go, mm, and it's there. You knead it, it's make it pliable. Okay, it makes it, so that's how you get there. You, the, the, when you show yourself rolling shoulders, the best thing you can do because you're contracting and relaxing the muscle and it's literally pumping fresh blood flow out. It's releasing other, uh, the, the stagnant blood flow and the toxins and it's flushing them out so that those muscles don't get sore because we see a lot of that. And now I don't just want a massage. I want a pizza too. Yeah, I want a pizza. <laughs> I want a soda. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but that, that so, stretch. Yeah, that stretch, everything yeah. backwards. So, we use a tool in our office. It's this little neck wedge. And this this works really well because the the uh, the foam is stiff. So we lie on it like this and our head drops back. We're lying on the ground. And then this the weight of your head with gravity sort of forces I use a little junior here. You know, when this lies back, it's forcing the head back and that creates uh, it sort of forces the curve, urges the curve. <clears throat> it doesn't really force anything. It's just letting gravity do it. And so that's a real nice tool. If you don't have something like this, then what you do is you roll up a towel, like a dish towel. It's got to be significant enough that it fills your neck, but your neck isn't hitting the ground. Okay, if your neck's hitting the ground, that's great if you want to sleep, but it's not a great a stretch. stretch. Yeah, you want a little gravity pulling on it. Um, it feels good over an exercise ball. Uh, this is a little better for the pure neck. But when I have people laying on this, what I'll have them do <clears throat> is while they're lying on the floor, I'll have them rotating their shoulders back and forth. Okay, and and that rotation, um, not on the film there, that rotation all the way. What that's doing is it's really working the whole rotator cuff pliability, and that makes a big difference. It's simple, right? I mean, you lay on this for um, two to three to five minutes tops. I always describe it as um, after five minutes, the glass is full. You can keep filling it up. It's not going to get any fuller. Okay. So if I'm laying on that, I've got that behind my head. My shoulders are out even, so I'm like this. 
I'm not down here. Yeah. I'm like this going forward. And yeah, back. it's best at 90 degrees. Now, that's optimal. Now, you Sometimes may, you can't do it. Well, yeah. So you may have to start at 45 and you might not be equitable from left to right. So you may be, um, you may be better off with your right hand than you are your left and you may be more more flexible so side to side it's going to vary you may have the right all the way up and the left down here because of a shoulder injury okay <clears throat> but i've broken um i've broken my clavicle and my shoulder blade and yeah those those are exercises i do to help reform the bone and and get the muscle pliable but they are great at opening up this whole shoulder girdle okay and, and uh that that rhythm of that motion you see i'm not forcing it i'm just going back and forth and what happens is is you might start here and by the time you're done it gets further back and um so that's a great exercise that's on the website as is the the wedge the ball stuff is on the website um even throughout the day you know if you're working in an office likely you're not laying on a neck wedge in the middle of the day or <laughs> yeah the boss is standing over on a that. ball <clears throat> Those are issues. You can literally go against the wall, put your heels against the wall, and put your head against the wall. To the degree, I had a guy today in my office when he did that, he said he felt like he was doing a backflip. Sure, that you know, much because he he was so literally much. when I said okay, relax, he went five inches forward. So he's holding his ten pound weight five inches forward. It's a lot of wasted energy. What happens? You know, a lot of times I'll adjust people and, and we'll give them some postural exercises. And a few weeks later, they come back and say, boy, I have so much energy. Well, you're not pissing it away with bad posture because you're spending okay. a lot of energy. You know, you're contracting your muscle. Nothing's being, nothing, no motion's being seen, but you're wasting a lot of energy. You're spending a lot of energy. Yeah. And they're working and they're creating exhaust. So the muscles get sore. Okay, it's just like turning on a car in the garage. You're not going anywhere, but you're creating exhaust and it's getting noxious in there. And that's why the muscles get so blasted sore. So without motion, <clears throat> it really, really bogs down. And based on that, I mean, there's no exercise as good as walking. I and mean, walking is the best thing you can do. That shoulder motion, swinging back and forth, helps the shoulder girdle. Each step you take, is like a micro adjustment. It's it's twisting the spine and giving it uh, flexibility. So the best thing you can do after you've been sewing a long time is going for a walk and making your making sure your arms are moving with it. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, you know, it, it's 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 real common. You know, this this is it, it, then you throw in tech neck, right? We all have we all have tech neck because we're like this. Right. And so it's the teenagers. Oh, my gosh. They've guaranteed me job work security. For, work until you retire. Long time. <clears throat> yeah. You know, so we're all so forward. We've got to draw that back. And um, I use Mick Jagger and Keith Richards as an example. If, if you had to live perfect, they wouldn't be alive. That would be true. Okay. So we <laughs> don't have to live true. perfectly. But if you can improve things a little bit and get ahead of the game, it makes a big difference. And we use uh, we use a few different nutrients. We use a thing called Mintran. It's a sea kelp and alfalfa. Oh, yummy! Yummy! You want to chew it? It's the best chew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it tastes like hay, uh, but it, that's with uh, calcium and magnesium. And we use that because that's the minerals. So certain muscles you use cause a contraction. Well, there's certain muscles, there's certain minerals that cause the phase mm -hmm. and the sea kelp and alfalfa along with this form of calcium and magnesium give you this uh, so people can use that when they're in a bad way or even just when they know they're going to be positioned and it can take that edginess off the muscle and then there's other nutrients we use that are whole food based that um, can help you know a lot of people have like osteoporosis and things like that and we can talk about that on another video but uh, the skeleton goes through a lot your discs need certain nutrition, and um, uh, from a disc perspective, the nutrition they need is are things that have connective tissue in it. So the bone broth, you know, bone broth is an elixir for your skeleton, and I, I highly recommend uh, either making or, or buying that and you using see that it. in all the magazines and articles now. Yeah, it was the original comfort food. 
you know, and it, it really makes a, it really makes a big difference so for your gut health, for your immune health. You know, so I like things that have crossover coverage, right? So it's not just for your muscles or bones. It's for your muscles, bones, your, 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 your skeleton. It's for your immune system. It's for your gut health. So that's one of those superfoods because it, uh, it really innervates or it, it feeds so much. Cool. Yeah. You know, all right, that was a lot of information. It's a lot of information. But it, when it gets right down to it, if you put it in, and I just moved my shoulder and it went crack, crack, crack. Um, when it gets right down to it, it's like move. Just remember to move. Even if you're still sitting in your chair, move your neck, move your shoulders, get up, move your ironing board. Literally for a couple just, of seconds, reset. Yeah, yeah it just, you know, reset yourself. Yeah. You know, with each with with each stitch, you know, you might have one that goes this way as you set the next one up draw back and come back in it'd be analogous to a batter stepping out of the batter's batter's box he's not going out to the dugout again he just right. step out of the batter's box for a second sure. and resets himself and so it is just a little bit of motion can really just break it up and break it free but the old adage use it or lose it is also yeah true. So, you know you have to think of this as an athletic endeavor it's physical. Thank you for that. Because okay. it really but is. It is. No, it, it is. is. A lot of people are like, oh, you just sit there all day. Mm, no. no. You're cutting and moving and. Hey, a car drive, a race car driver is just sitting there all day. Yeah. Okay. Now, I used to think, why are they, why is that tough? Well, they're sitting in a box just like this and they're doing micro movements. Granted, they die if they don't get it right. <laughs> you, yeah. you cut Not your a finger. Yeah. But, um, but it's the same thing. It's a static posture and it demands you to be physically fit for it, otherwise you pay the price. So, you know, I, I looked at my job, after I broke my shoulders, I was I was struggling, and then I realized, hey, you know, my job is really athletic, I'm doing these physical moves, and if I don't prepare it for that, why should I, why should I expect that the Packers don't go out there without training? So I started working out appropriately for the demand that I have, and bam, I, you know, I feel much better and no different than this. If you look at it like an athletic endeavor and do things to prepare yourself for it, you'll be able to do it longer, not only per sitting, but over a long period of time. I was just thinking I've been sewing probably, I think, seven years longer than you've been alive. <laughs> But that's okay. I'm just going to take that as a compliment. Yeah, and run with there it. you go. There you go. <laughs> Sounds great. We really appreciate your coming in. You can see the exercises, other things on Dr. Dan's website. Um, he's got some great video clips on YouTube. I'm going to give you our pitch here for a second. Our YouTube channel, Dr. Dan's YouTube channel, um, it really, really helps a small business if you share subscribe or like what we're doing and when i say subscribe it doesn't cost anything to subscribe to our youtube channel you'll see our videos you'll see his videos from a business standpoint the more videos that are shared the more people watch the more youtube shows us to more people so it's a wonderful way to support a small business without having to to pay to do it um, on facebook it's really nice if you click the little like button it's even better for us if you say hi from plymouth wisconsin it's even better for us if you say oh thanks hey dr dan i had one question and you ask a question and we answer each one of those interactions the little algorithm and the spiders out there crawling around on the internet are paying attention and they're saying hey that not only is a nice site people are actually liking the site and are interacting with it and the more that we do for each other in small businesses. If you share our video with someone else, if you saw this and you think, oh, hey, my sister should, she's on the computer all the time, she should see this, click that share button because that's even better than answering, answering questions. So it's a wonderful way. We really appreciate the support. Um, I love answering questions. So um, if you haven't uh, been able to pick it up through this video, I'm pretty passionate about what I do. And um, uh, so it's pretty cool because what, what what we do is a lot like what they do at Sewing Basket here. It's empowering. It's giving you something that you can do. And uh, frankly, the people who use me the less are the ones who listen to me the most. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So, That's it. so, pleasure being with you. Wonderful. Your Facebook page, your website is www.francisciro. Yep. Clinic. Yes, francisciroclinic.com. And your and Facebook page is Francis Chiropractic Clinic. 
dot com and uh, sort of linked to my personal site which is dr daniel francis so you put that in with uh plymouth wisconsin there's only one of me here that's so. it we just call him dr dan <laughs> all right thank you so much we really hope you uh enjoyed this if you did make some comments and let us know um we've got other topics we can talk about i can you know he can come back and rub my neck See again for trigger. another reason <laughs> <laughs> sounds great thanks so much thanks have and a good night and a good weekend we're gonna sign out Take care.